Suzanne is a mother of two boys, age five and seven. As an electrician of her family, her goal is to contain and control the energy levels in order to maintain some semblance of order. The inertia her sons create can be dizzying. But with a voltmeter to uptick the positive, she unleashes a happy home filled with family memories. Today, Suzanne is giving her second speech in her competent communicator. The speech is to focus on organization. Her objectives are to create a strong opening and conclusion and to use appropriate transitions when moving from one idea to another. Her speech today is called PMS, better pick up some chocolate. <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> Then you make them gluten-free, organic, little strawberries that look like ladybugs so that they'll eat them. And then you dress them up in bubble wrap and cover them in hula hoops so that they're dressed like a jellyfish. And they can run around your lawn showing off what they learned today at the aquarium to all your neighbors so they know that you are a perfect mom. Just in time for your kid to push the other kid down. And in this normalness of behavior, you're overwhelmed and say, what went wrong? The rise of PMS can be directly correlated to the popularity and access to social media. Social media provides us with a plethora of information on how to be the perfect mom. And that same application provides us the form to boast of our achievements and receive our accolade. Pinterest is my drug of choice. <laughs> <laughs> I would spend hours each night looking up 10 habits of successful moms, 30 cute meal ideas, 50 ways to keep your kid creative, and did you make this mistake feeding your kid? It all seems so easy. But then I'd wake up bleary-eyed in the morning, and I'd make a PB&J on bread. You know, bread that has gluten in it. <laughs> and send my kids off to school, never once accomplishing one of the seven habits for healthier, happier children. And I would fall into a deep, depression, knowing that my kid may not be perfect. And I knew this to be true, because that same app showed me that other mothers were able to do this. It's like they all received this perfect handbook from the hospital when they got their kid home, and they forgot to give me mine. 
I would look on Facebook and on Twitter and see my friends pin, post, and tweet their 140 character achievements for their children. Little Johnny scored a goal today. Little Renee raised more money than all of your kids for the American Heart Association for the elementary school that you care about. Never once saying how much effort little Renee's mom put in to getting the big <laughs> duck for her daughter. <laughs> The effect of PMS, and the reason why I'm here today, is its effect on our children. And the need for action is to help our children, because perfect is an intangible endpoint of comparison. Perfect breeds a society that is built upon achievement at all costs. We are raising a generation of Rosa Ruiz. For those of you who don't remember, Rosa Ruiz famously won the 1980 Boston Marathon without going the distance. Her, although she was capable of finishing this marathon, her need to be the best circumvented her fear of failure, and she lied to be first. This need for the end goal has prevailed in my family. My son wanted a Lego. It was to be the last Lego he ever needed in his vast eight years of life. <laughs> and I explained to him he had two choices. One, he could do his chores and do the recycling to earn it. Or two, he could maybe use one of the hundreds of last Legos that he had to make it. Instead, my son decided to steal the Disney piggy bank money, lie about where he got the money, and when I put on my mom detective hat and drove a confession worthy of a Law and Order episode <laughs> from him, he finally admitted that earning it or failing to make it wasn't worth it. Leading me to today, I am here to confess I am not a perfect mom. Although I am here to try and understand that my need for accomplishment is not that of my children, and that teaching them to learn and experience is what I am here to do, and that while I have an influence on how they see the world, my ability to keep them out of jail and in the White House <laughs> is limited. <laughs> For my boys are curious and awkward and flawed, exactly as they should be. So as Mother's Day is approaching this Sunday, I ask you to help me stop the addiction for perfection. And rather than doing one of the 10 perfect Mother's Day gifts, Try one a little bit more genuine and put pen to paper and tell your mom, thank you for being creative and flawed and teaching me that life's journey is better suited with snuggles and kisses. Thank you for my flaws. I love you.